Okay. So welcome to today's uh, mini webinar. Uh, today we're going to focus on our career search feature that we offer and how that can tie into a student's results from their assessments. I just want to welcome you all. My name is Jennifer Bento Pinion, and I'm here at MIFA on the college planning team as a program manager for MIFA Pathway. And we are proud to offer this resource to students, families, and educators throughout Massachusetts. Uh, so just to give you a little, a little background on MIFA Pathway, uh, it's a direct replacement of Your Plan for the Future. So if you're familiar with Your Plan for the Future, this is a replacement of, of that resource. Uh, it's very different. Um, if you'll see the difference if you if you've been into um, if you had been into to YPFF. Uh, but MIFA Pathway is a complete college and career planning resource for students, educators, and education policymakers across the Commonwealth. And it's offered to all middle and high schools in Massachusetts, free of cost, by the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority. MIFA Pathway plays a key role in the Commonwealth's efforts around college and career readiness and success by increasing access to information about higher education and career opportunities for all types of students. It provides access to academic and professional success to learners in grades 6 through 12 across the Commonwealth by setting each student on a path to college and career success. So rather than a one-size-fits-all approach to future planning, Pathway is tailored to meet the needs of the Commonwealth's diverse student and workforce populations by offering comprehensive tools in one easily accessible website. So Pathway offers interactive planning, college and career search tools. It provides comprehensive data on student academic readiness and success, as well as offering communication tools and central, centralized student tracking. So imported data is the basis of the platform and leads to a powerful reporting capabilities for an educator, which incorporates both qualified student data and student preferences all in one location. So when a school signs an agreement, we work with the designated data manager to upload the, the selected SIMS file and import that directly into the pathway system, which then creates a secure community for your school, where only users from that school can access your community along with the counselor portal. Um, that said, this student portal is available for any any student regardless of if their school is an affiliate school so the difference between affiliate and not is the educators at an affiliate school have access to that counselor portal and therefore can see the activities that the student is working on within the site so what i'll do is i'm going to keep everyone on mute as we go through this webinar and then at the very end i will leave my contact information on the on the screen so you can um, if you have any questions following you can get directly in touch with me in addition to that I will provide the username and password to the test account that I will go into so you can use that and go in and um, peruse the site on your own if you like so this is the this is our our main uh, landing page here uh, as you can see mefapathway.org so if you're a student you will Click I am a student and it will bring you, I'll show you quickly the registration process. But before I do that, this how it works video is great. Um, I'm just going to click on it here to show you how to access it, um, but I'm not, I won't bring it up. It's about three minutes long and it goes through the, the features very quickly. It gives a compre comprehensive overview of the uh, features in the student portal. So this is something that you can share if you're an educator and you can share with um, administration if you want to just give them a quick glimpse of what this, the site is all about. Or if you uh, want to share with, uh, if you want to put on your school website or you want to share the link with parents to show them that you're using this in your school or if you're working with students and you want to say hey this is what this great site has to offer take a quick peek so you just click on the little play button here and it'll bring up the video all right so for students very simple registration process as a new user they would click first time user they click register here and it brings them through three quick pages. So first name, last name, date of birth, uh, the select the city or town that the school is in. So let's just use Everett 
as an example. They put in Everett and then all of the schools in Everett will appear. So they select whether they're middle school or the high school and then they click submit. The second page brings them uh, to where they will create a username and password and they will select their year of graduation and they will also create two security questions. So the security questions are if and when they forget or lose their password. So they can reset the password by either the email address that they put in, so they would receive a password reset through the email, or they can reset by the security question. So two different ways. So that that's three very simple pages that the student goes through, takes them two to three minutes, very, very easy doesn't ask them any trick questions. <laughs> then they click uh, submit. And once they click submit, they'll be brought to the profile page. So let me log in here using my credentials for my test account. And again, I will provide these at the end of the, of the webinar. So you'll, you can have them to, to use yourself. So a student puts in there if they've already created their account, their username, their password. They click submit. Pretty standard. And then when when they get into their login for at the, at the first time they'll see their dashboard so the dashboard is great because what it does is it recognizes the grade level that the student is in and as you can see we offer this grade 6 through 12 so a student that has a grade level of 6 7 or 8 will see different activities than that of a 9 10 11 or or 12th grader. So our, my test student here is a grade 12 student and this dashboard page shows the progress that the student is making in the site along with prompting them uh, the different activities that they should be thinking about and working on. So I'll just scroll down slowly here to show you, you know, they're, they're updating their resume, they're um, updating and setting maybe new goals and strategies, refining the career list, they're managing applications, applying to scholarships. So these are all things that a grade 12 student should be thinking about. So that's that's the dashboard. But we're going to focus on in this session here, we're, we're focusing on the career piece. So I'm going to click on Discover Careers. And the Discover Careers piece is, it's a, it's a widely used tool and it's, they can start using this in the in the middle school levels uh, for exploration and discovery, and then once they get into the higher grade levels, they're really starting to focus on their post secondary plans. So they're looking at their interests and their values, and they're tying those into the career search, and in turn building out a high school plan, the courses for their for high school and then tying that into, of course, what they want to do after they graduate from high school. So I just clicked on Discover Careers, and um, now I'm going to just scroll down here. Um, and our overview pages all, always have you know, links and different little tidbits. Uh, so the, we have two assessments that tie into the career search. So we have what are my interests and then what are my work values. So on the educator end, if you're an affiliate school, the, the educator would be able to view the results of both assessments uh, up to three groupings. So if a student retakes either assessment a fourth time, the oldest results will be kicked out. But they're, they're different, a different format um, than one another. So we have the interest test here. So this is, um, this is based off the Holland Code. It's, it's 30 activities. So when the student clicks get started, they'll see the first activity. They rate the activity from I hate it to I love it and then move on to the next one. And then when they, they do have to complete the assessment in order to get results, so they just get through the 30, then they click save. But if they would like to review their previous results, they can do that as well. So we'll just click on previous results. And now what happens here is based on the the results that the student had gotten prior, we have their top three interests, as we can see, social, investigative, and enterprising. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we'll see that 
we have a, a summary of each. And from here, the student can click on either one of these boxes to see associated careers to this particular result. So we're going to click on Enterprising here, and now a, a great list of related careers is generated from that one result. So from here, the student can look to, you know, look through the list and say, hmm, I want to see what an aquacultural manager is. I don't even know what that is. I mean, so we have a, a, a brief descri a description of the career on the top of the page here. And then as we scroll down, we'll, have, we'll see uh, some more details. So daily tasks, work activities, more careers like this. We can click on the different careers if we want to explore further. Um, all of the information on the careers comes from ONET. So depending what ONET provides to us, that's what is available within these pages here. So how does this career match to you? So if we scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see that this student has taken both the interest and the values test, and these are their top results, and how does that match up to this particular career? So as we can see, enterprising matches up, um, and so does their result of independence. So, you know, it's a, a, a decent match. If they would like to save a career to their careers list, they just merely click Save, and then that's, that career will be on their careers list. And I might as well just show you that here since I mentioned it. So we have the career list, and you'll see all of the careers that the student has added. So this student has 34 careers on their list now. So maybe in the earlier grades, they have a, a, a pretty long list, but as they get into the upper grade level, levels, they're narrowing that list down um, to, to, you know, maybe things that they actually want to pursue. Uh, and then from here, the student can add a career to their favorites. So once they add a career to their favorites, it then appears on that digital on their digital portfolio page. So the digital portfolio page acts as sort of a repository of some of the different activities the student is working on. Student can download this, so it's good, but the career the favorited careers are here on the right side. So then from here the student can click click on a particular career, it will bring them back to that details page, or they can edit it from here as well. All right, so going back to the Discover Careers page, I want to show you how the results of the assessments tie into this, this career search page in a, in a larger way. So I just thought maybe I did that quickly. Sorry, I went to Discover Careers, and then I went to Career Search. Now I'm going to scroll down a tiny bit and just so you can get a view of what the page looks like. And all of our, um, the pages are, are they, you scroll down on them rather than across, which is a new feature. And I think that's good because especially if a student um, is using this on their phone, which it is mobile optimized, you know, it's easy just to scroll down rather than to, to scroll over. It doesn't really make sense. So this is, um, that's a, something that we, that we, that we added. So, if you can see at the top here, we have uh, ed education level, so you can filter a search a number of different ways. So you can create a search and then save a search and go back to a search that you've saved. Um, so I'm just going to, I'll show you just, a, I'll do a quick little um, example of how a student can look for for. for careers based on their interests and their values. So we're going to go over to the left side here, and I'm just going to click on Use My Interests. Now, if a student has saved their interest results, they can click on Use My Interests, and their top three interests will be, be automatically checked off here, and then a list of corresponding careers will be generated. From here, the student can scroll down this list. It's alphabetized and say, oh, well, um, Let's see, uh, a chemical engineer sounds like, or a chemical technician is something I'd like to check out. So they click on chemical technician, and that'll bring them to that details page. They can save the career if they like, then go back to the, the search results. They can add another filter from here if they like. So if they want to add use my values, so if they've taken that use my values assessment and saved results, they click on that, and then the top three values are checked off, and that filters that list further. 
So now we're looking at a smaller list of careers, but it's filtered further. From here, the student can even say, all right, well, I, I want to look at these career clusters, these categories. I, I'm interested in health and human services. They click, they checked off that box, and now we're down to 56 careers based on those filters that we set. So as you can see, the filters go across here. Now maybe the student says, hmm, I want to go to school for two years. We can, we can narrow that list down even further. So now we have the student's interests, their values, their career cluster, and the fact that they want to go to school for two years. And so now we have a, a tidy little list of, of uh, careers that have ge been generated, and now we can save this search if we like. So I like to date them. Let's say what's today. Today's the 19th already. And we're going to save that. And then once that is saved, they can just click the Save Searches and then access that from here. So if they wanted to look at the search they did on May 24th, they just click Load Search, and that, that list would, would generate. So this is a great way for students to, you know, in the younger grade level, start exploring and discovering different careers that they may be interested in. And then as they get older, it can really serve as a tool that they use to help them plan for uh, what they're going to do after high school. So that, um, that about does it for the, for the, career, the career piece. Um, you know, you're, you're, um, I'll leave my contact information on the screen here. Uh, feel free to, to reach out if you have questions. If you're an educator that uh, is interested in using this great resource at your, at your high school, certainly, certainly get in touch with me. Uh, up top here, here is the, the login that I used. Uh, to that test account, so you're welcome to use that, that grade 12 test account, or create your own. You know, you, you're welcome to, um, especially if you're, if you're a parent, if you have a student that, uh, that may, uh, that could take advantage of this site, certainly encourage them to create an account. Uh, so here's uh, meetthepathway.org, then they click I'm a student, and then here is the, the login for the test account. All right. So that concludes our mini webinar for this afternoon. I thank you for joining and again, reach out with any uh, questions or comments. All right, thanks so much.